Welcome to LC Screen Talk. My name is Larry, and today we are going over my top 10 favorite characters in film for 2018. As the year wraps up, one of the lists I love to go over is my personal ranking for favorite characters that appeared in films for the year. This year we had a ton of great films that featured wonderful characters, whether those are characters that were just full of depth and really complex people, or characters that just brought joy and brought a smile to my face. So as per usual, these are just my thoughts. These are my personal top 10 favorite characters of the year based on how they resonated with me personally. So if you disagree, make sure to leave those kind disagreements in the comment section down below. But more importantly than that, make sure that you list your personal favorite characters in film for the year. Because what's the fun in film if we can't have some discussion? Also, these are just the characters. So this doesn't necessarily have a reflection on the films themselves. This is not going to be the order of like my top 10 favorite movies of the year. These are just the characters within the films. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the list. At number 10, I have Lee Israel from Can You Ever Forgive Me? Now, Lee is not a completely likable character, but she is just the type of character I love to see. A female lead who is complex, she's snarky and sarcastic, which I love. And she falls into this weird anti-hero gray area when it comes to a protagonist, and that made for a very interesting film and a very interesting character. Of course, she was played beautifully by Melissa McCarthy as well, but I found her equal parts funny, equal parts sad, and overall just a really well-rounded, very well-developed, fully fleshed out character. And that's why I had to include her on my list of favorite characters of the year. In at number nine, I have Bumblebee. Yes, everybody's favorite Transformer broke into the list with his own feature-length solo film. And I think the feature-length film definitely helped. Everybody already loves Bumblebee just because he's been kind of molded as this very likable character that appeals to all ages. However, he's never been as likable and, more importantly, as fleshed out and developed as a character as he was in this film. And that has a large part to do with Travis Knight, the director of Bumblebee, because he focused so much on character design and in particular facial design for Bumblebee, and it really paid off. He was endearing, he was sweet, he was funny, he was everything you want from the like beast character in these kid meets alien type of storylines. Now, Charlie also could have been on this list. She was a great protagonist, a really awesome, independent female with her own autonomy as a lead. But ultimately, Bumblebee is the one that steals your heart. He's the one that steals the show, as it should be in his own film. So he's the one to make the list. At number eight, I have Okoye from Black Panther and Avengers Infinity War. In really her first major film appearance, Okoye shot up to number one favorite female in the MCU. I loved her character in Black Panther. Granted, I love that kind of like badass warrior woman kind of stereotype in films generally, but she was so much more than that. Her character was able to develop with very little of that development coming in actual script writing. She doesn't have her own plot or storyline necessarily. But seeing her inner conflict as she now has to decide between duty and humanity and her as a person was a very interesting complex story to see unfold. Seeing her relationship with T'Challa was absolutely wonderful. With Shuri it was great. With Nakia all of her interactions were wonderful. She had the best fight scenes in the film for me. Her relationship with Daniel Kaluuya's character and that rhino wonderful. Then we get her in Infinity War. She doesn't do as much, but she had like some line-stealing moments in the film. Everything that came out of her mouth was gold. So Okoye, awesome, love her, had to be on this list. 
at number seven, I have Holly Burns from Ben Is Back. I just saw this film, actually, so this was a last-minute addition onto my list, but I could not leave this character out. First of all, Julia Roberts plays this woman impeccably well. What an absolutely stellar performance from Roberts. But also, what a wonderful character. She plays the mother of a recovering drug addict, which is a theme we saw several times in some pretty, pretty solid films throughout the year. But her portrayal and her character is just so wonderful because she is stern, she is straightforward, she is no nonsense. However, even when she's angry, even when she has to like lay down the law, the love is always there. She constantly is exuding that passionate love she has for her son. And I thought that was really something special to watch in the film. Seeing somebody who refuses to give up no matter how hard the task is, no matter who is telling you, telling your son that this isn't worth it anymore. We have to just let them do what they're going to do. But seeing that passion in this mother was really wonderful. And again, Julie Roberts played it so well and struck all the balance that she needed to strike between hard edge and soft, between happy and heartbroken. And it's all there. It's all portrayed so well. Again, another really well-developed, fully realized female character. And, and she really resonated with me. And I think her performance, as well as Lucas Hedges' performance, really connected me to this film and hit me on a personal level that I wasn't anticipating with Ben is Back. In at number six, I have Cleo from Roma. What a wonderful character Cleo turned out to be. Such a gentle, warm soul to just spend a film with. And that's so important for these kind of slice of life type of movies to have somebody that you so easily connect with. She is warm and she is soft and she is loving, yet she's so strong and as beautiful as a character she is. She's also a flawed character. She makes mistakes and I mean she just felt real. Felt like the woman I've known in my own life. Yalita Aparicio just plays her wonderfully, like completely flawless actually. She is the character and it really is just a beautiful human beautiful person that you care for, you care about, you're fully invested in her plight, whichever way it might go. Uh, that scene, the birthing scene, about near killed me watching it um, because I was so invested in her as a person. So that's why she's in on this list at number six. At number five, I have Paddington Bear from Paddington 2. Is there a more lovable character in film for 2018. I'm not sure it's possible if I'm being honest. <laughs> the charm is still there, beaming through Ben Wishaw's wonderful voice performance and the absolutely flawless computer animation. Paddington Bear brings even more sweetness, more delight, more optimism in this sequel and I don't know that it comes at a more needed time. And putting him in this jail setting with these prisoners just made his disposition and him as a character, this adorable character, even more of a beaming delight. And he's doing all of this for his dear Aunt Lucy to bring up this absolutely just delightful ending. It's hard not to fall in love with Paddington Bear. So, as Aunt Lucy says, if we are kind and polite, the world will be right. Coming in at number four is Thor from Avengers Infinity War. Like those rhyming scales, huh? Huh? <laughs> so Thor is already my favorite Avenger. It's my favorite character in all of the MCU. And no, it's not just because the perfect Chris Hemsworth plays him. I love Thor's outlook. I love Thor's comedy. I love Thor's powers. I love everything about Thor in the MCU. And I absolutely adored Thor in Avengers Infinity War. Many 
maybe even including myself, would argue that Infinity War is Thanos' movie. He is the main character of the film, and it's his arc that we follow. It's his mission, his storyline. However, I think an argument could be made that this really was Thor's shining moment of a film. We got a lot of development for him in Ragnarok, and that only intensified when it came to Infinity War. He goes through a full character arc in this film when so many of the other heroes don't really get to see that shining light, which is a very welcome surprise. He really has all the best moments. Pairing him with the Guardians of the Galaxy made his comedy just reach new levels. His sacrifice is absolutely beautiful to behold. Seeing that vulnerability for him as a character and then having it kind of come full circle with that arrival in Wakanda was absolutely cheer-worthy, one of the best moments in film for 2018. So I can't wait to see where his character goes from here, but I really think Infinity War opened the gates for Thor to really shine through in a very crowded, at this point, MCU cast. At number three, I have Miles Morales from Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I loved Miles Morales. I knew of him from the comic books, but I've never really followed Spider-Man all that much. He's not my fave. I know he's plenty of people's like number one, but I just really fell in love with him in this film. First of all, it was so refreshing to get a Spider-Man that wasn't Peter Parker and to get this wonderful origin story that wasn't the same old, same old. And as familiar as it was, Miles Morales just brought such a new, fresh energy to the role, and I absolutely loved it. First of all, it was just wonderful to see another superhero of color that really speaks to Latino Americans as well as Black Americans and all of us, all of us mixed race little babies. <laughs> But his softer disposition and his failings as a character, he fails quite often in this film, really made him relatable, really made him connect to the audience. It hooked you into his plight and really invested you into his story arc. Even amongst these other awesome spider people and animals <laughs> coming on into his world, we still never lost focus of him, his connection to his family, and hoping that those connections work out, as well as his success as Spider-Man in this whole big debacle. And his success as a person, as he continues to navigate and have this wonderful coming-of-age story. So, I loved Miles Morales in this film. That's why he's all the way up at number three. At number two, I have Mary Poppins from Mary Poppins Returns. I loved Emily Blunt's rendition of Mary Poppins. Now, don't get me wrong, of course, Julie Andrews is amazing as Mary Poppins, and she will always be the first to go to that you think of in your head. However, I think Emily Blunt did an outstanding job of just recreating this character. She has a lot of sameness to what Julie Andrews did, but as you watch her portrayal, you can see what she said in interviews was accurate. She didn't watch the, the original film. She took her adaptation from the books. She went back, she read Mary Poppins, and that's how she developed the character. Oh, is she a delight. As we've established, I love a slightly snarky, slightly sarcastic character, and Emily Blunt just delivered those one-liners so perfectly. But much like I said earlier with other characters on this list, she always had that warmth to her. So she would deliver the one-liners, she would be posh and proper, but she still had that lovingness to her. There was always that smile to Mary Poppins, even as she sends a zinger on down your way. And of course, I just love this message of like this prim and proper woman saying, let's have some fun, let's get ridiculous, and let's throw all this logic nonsense out the door and just let our hair down a little bit. So it all just works so well for me. She charmed the pants off of me in that movie theater. I absolutely loved her. And I think Emily Blunt's rendition of the character is what really 
really serves as the glue that holds that whole film together and I really enjoyed the film a lot and it's mainly because of this wonderful portrayal so she spoke to me she sticks out in my mind as one of my favorite characters of the year thus she's in at number two the runner-up so before I unveil my number one pick here are some honorable mentions I'd be remiss if I don't mention Eeyore from Christopher Robin. Brad Garrett was perfect to voice Eeyore. They gave him the best lines. I thought he stole the show personally. He's my favorite character from the Winnie the Pooh series, and I thought he was just wonderful in the film. If he had a larger part, if he was in it a little bit more, maybe he would have been able to break the top ten. But as is, still one of my favorites of the year. Rachel Chu and Nick Young are going to co-share a spot, and really, the fact that I couldn't decide between the two of them from Crazy Rich Asians is why neither of them quite made the list. But these are two very likable, very charismatic characters. Their romance just worked, and I believe it's a big reason why Crazy Rich Asians was the success it was. You're rooting for them as individual people, you're rooting for them together as a couple, Plus, this introduced us to the very hunky Henry Golding. My final honorable mention is Darlene Sweet from Bad Times at the El Royale. I loved this character from the film, a film that was chock full of really strong character and character work. Everything from her beautiful voice to her street smarts and kind of outsmarting good old Jeff Bridges, and then the amazing speech that she gives to Chris Hemsworth's character at the end. Everything about her character just really worked. It really sang to me. This is definitely the honorable number 11, if you will, because it was so difficult not to put her on my list. So in at number one, the top spot, my favorite character in film for 2018 is Simon Spear from Love, Simon. Might have been so hard to guess, I'm sure, but I absolutely loved Simon in this film. Nick Robinson did such an amazing job, first of all, redeeming himself as an actor, <laughs> but secondly, bringing this wonderful character to life. Simon works so well as a character because he could literally be anyone. Again, relating to men, women, straight, gay, bisexual, transgender, it doesn't matter. Simon is just a relatable, wonderful character. One that has plenty of flaws, and we see his failures play out on screen. We see that he's still a high school student play out on screen. But him overcoming those demons, him coming to terms with himself, him succeeding in the end is what makes him such a beautiful, wonderful character to behold. Plus, having this really well-developed character be the center of the first mainstream LGBTQ-centered film was really something special for me personally. Seeing this beautiful romance play out was really wonderful for me to see personally. I mean, it was funny, he was awkward, he was dorky, he wasn't like stereotype gay, but he wasn't not stereotype gay, and I love that the other characters really kind of called attention to not being shocked, but could be shocked. It's just like, no, you are who you are, and that's that. So overall, maybe it's just because I obviously connect to the character and really enjoy seeing this character and love that this really well-written, well-developed, well-executed character existed this year, but undeniably, Simon was my favorite character in film in 2018. So that is my list of my personal favorite characters in film from this year. What did you think of the characters I listed here? More importantly, who were your favorite characters in film from this past year? Let me know either in the comment section down below or you can hit me up on Twitter. If you like this video, also make sure that you hit that like button down below and subscribe to the channel so you are always up to date on our latest videos. I love you all so much for your support. Mwah! Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!